the more common phenomenon is, uh, is beginning to lose it, to begin to turn into bureaucracy, to draw farther from the front line. And we have many what we call the westward winds that begin to push you away from the founder mentality as you grow. And I heard even from all of you uh, elements of all of these stories. One is the Midas touch, which is that your initial success is so great that you cannot resist prematurely going into other businesses, other segments, other countries, because you've done so well on the first business that why not, uh, why not pursue uh, additional complexity? There are many examples where that ended up being uh, the death knell of, uh, of a great idea. A second Western wind that every single person mentioned and that you must all feel every day is that talent grows slower than revenues. It's very tough to clone yourself. But the danger is that if you scale too fast, you as, let's say, A people, let uh, yourself hire B people and don't pay enough attention to it, and B people hire C people, and then you have a, really pro a real problem. A third westward wind is what we call the death by a thousand averages. When you begin to have middle layers where you have people who never see customers, planners, people like that, what begins to have happen is you start talking about the average customer, which of course does not exist. You begin uh, spreading resources more democratically in larger businesses as opposed to what we call the power of 10 and just really going for something all out. That can begin to erode the founder mentality. Average is uh, somewhat of a synonym for mediocrity, and mediocrity in today's world is a synonym for not for leadership. And finally is the fog of governance. You know, as the founders begin to drift farther from uh, being CEO, perhaps, onto the board, other family members are involved, professional CEOs come in, maybe the founder is even uh, not in the business anymore, uh, other investors going public, all of these complexities around governance. Bain had one near-death experience, uh, and it was exactly on this topic. It created a massive crisis. The company almost died and has been amazingly successful since, but it was really a close call. So be aware of the westward winds. Occasionally, companies get it back. Not often, but occasionally. One I've been involved in that has been just amazing has been the story of a Lego, which is written up in the book uh, Repeatability, of uh, doing every one of these single things, every one of these westward winds uh, becoming subject to it. And then the C new CEO courageously uh, being able to actually reverse all of them and uh, go back. Apple with Steve Jobs and the, or even the return uh, uh, to uh, Starbucks of uh, Howard uh, Schultz would be another example. But you don't want to have to do that. It's better to go up the uh, right-hand side of the matrix. You know, this theme of complexity is, uh, is a complex one. And, uh, you know, over time, you accumulate businesses, countries, products, et cetera. And uh, uh, gradually, over time, it's, it's possible to become uh, much less focused. Those opportunities lead to a much more complex organization. First layers, uh, then maybe even a point where you don't even uh, know people as well, then, then, then a matrix, which uh, is a great benefit but can also be a great curse because at every node of the matrix, you have uh, committees and you have people very often that don't even see the customer and enormous decision-making complexity. And finally, process complexity. You know, we did, we did something called the um, CEO Agenda a couple years ago where we interviewed 50 CEOs and then we talked to 377 executives uh, who are not CEOs. And we said, "Get what bothers you the most these days? What gets in the way of your achieving your objectives? And by far, the, and these were in larger companies, and by far the number one thing was uh, dealing, with, uh, dealing with internal complexity. I saw a study, and this might be interesting even, even for you to think about, uh, quite a while ago, but I never forgot about it, of somebody who studied great teams, uh, businesses and some other teams, and terrible teams. And he sat in meetings, and the terrible teams spent uh, about 20% of their time uh, talking about uh, external things, the customer, uh, competitor moves, um, what's happening in the market. They spent 80% of their time talking internally. Uh, what's this going to do to our pay? How do we persuade so-and-so? What are we going to do about, uh, you know, how is that going to make me look? 
how do we present it? Whereas the best teams spent 70 to 80% of their time externally focused. I think that's a great indicator of uh, the founder mentality. This is a chart from a piece of work we did at Bain where um, uh, it was in a larger company and I, but this is just like the extreme of what can happen. So maybe seeing something so egregiously horrible will burn its way down into your, your, uh, into your brain. But this is a chart. We were asked, asked to help a company that had gotten bloated and fat and out of shape to speed up its metabolism in a faster world. And so one way you would do it is you'd say, all right, what are the 10 top decisions you make? This, this was an engineering change order. Uh, and uh, you know, this isn't like a merger or an acquisition. Uh, and uh, uh, how fast do those take, and does anyone know how they're made? And so we mapped it out. And there were like eight different groups involved in these different steps. So the Bain team went in and mapped it out using people's agendas. And what we found was that by the time we mapped out all the meetings around this engineering change order, that there had been 125 different people involved, 700 interactions, and no one agreed on the process to make a, a decision. This is the sign of an, an obese, uh, organization that is, uh, that is really headed towards uh, disaster and maybe so far away from being in physical shape that, uh, and I think this is a reason why there are a lot more companies like this around than there used to be. And I think it's a reason why companies with the founder mentality uh, have a chance to outmaneuver them, never become close to this. I think it's so interesting that when Tim Cook was asked about what he learned from Steve Jobs, he focused on simplicity and focus and uh, you know, it's very tough to let go of things. After doing this, I realized, and my wife and I realized, our lives had become too complex, and they still are. So we eliminated 50% of the things we own, 90% of our magazine subscriptions, uh, on and on and on. We looked at clubs and things that we were irrelevant to sucking time out of the remaining uh, whatever number of years we have left on planet Earth. Tragically fewer, as I'm older than, than uh, probably everybody else in the room. And even then, it was, it's very hard to let go of things. It's hard to let go of old clothes. It's hard to let go of skis that your kids had. And uh, it's hard to let go of your college textbooks and clean out. And businesses, it's hard to let go of assets, bad R&D projects, businesses that are non-core. Uh, but in this world that requires speed, it's more important. 